This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. Welcome to BISPTrainings.com. My name is Sumit, and here I'm with my new video in Salesforce Advanced Development. And in this video, we will be discussing how to configure SAML based single sign on for communities between two Salesforce orgs where one will act as an identity provider and uh, the community will be act as a service provider with community enabled and configured. <coughs> so I move ahead and I'll demonstrate you how to configure SSO. First of all, let's try to understand what exactly SSO is and why it is required in an industry and why it is gaining so popularity nowadays. So as per Wikipedia, SSO stands for single sign on and it's a property of access control of multiple related but independent software systems. Uh, you might have seen a couple of times whenever we try to visit, whenever we visit any website and if we post and if we try to post some comments, so they used to ask us to register to create a new login or they used to ask us to log in through Google or log in through Facebook or any any other social networking sites like LinkedIn or Twitter. So basically they are also enabling that SSO on their web portals or in their websites. So basically with this property, a user can log in once and gain access to all the systems without being prompted to log in again at each of them. Uh, in a very simple term, it's an ability for system to establish authentication using a mutually agreed upon an identity mechanism. And so we need to configure, we need to set up an identity mechanism which will talk between two applications, two software systems which are independent of each other. And in order to configure SSO, we would be going to use SAML and SAML basically stands, uh, it's, a, it's a standard for federation single sign on. And in SAML, the authentication interface is hosted by the customer. And in like, as you can see here, uh, user request a secure resource. So let's suppose user try to log in onto salesforce.com. And uh, in order to log in onto salesforce.com, or in a Salesforce community, either we need to have a proper community credentials, we need to re we register on there, or we can use our Facebook login ID password to log in, uh, Facebook credentials to log in onto Salesforce community. So when we click on that link, it will connect to the customer SAML software that would be verified by the portal. And once, so basically the customer authentication, uh, the customer authenticates the user. In our case, my customer will be my Facebook. And once the authentication is successful, the user will return to salesforce.com with SAML and is granted the session. So this is what complete process, it's a complete cycle. It's a complete process uh, in configuring or logging onto any web portals using social sites or any other uh, credentials or login IDs. So uh, now what we are trying to do, I have created a community. So let me show you a couple of examples. So first of all, let me show you one community. So I have set up a community. So let me show you first of all my community. That's my community. I'm talking about BISP sales community. And my requirement is to configure a SSO for this community for this particular uh, for this BISP sales community so that to log in into it uh, I need to provide my I can use my Salesforce credentials or I, I need to use my SAML settings to log in into Salesforce community so right now as you can see I have logged in because I opened the Salesforce community from my Salesforce instance so that's why the by default is logged in but if I access this community from uh, in a different browser, we need to provide credentials for that. So let's have a look how to configure SSO for this. So that's my Salesforce community. Uh, 
Now, uh, we'll be going to have a look that how to configure SAML for to log in into this community by clicking on a button. So first of all, we, we would be going to configure uh, identity provider. So we need to enable identity provider in your identity provider organization. So I'll in search, I just type identity provider. You will find out this identity provider in your security control. So click on identity provider. And this will, uh, it will automatically generate an identity provider for your system, including your domain. So we have BISP trainings community and BISP sales community identities. So that's my BISP sales uh, identity. So I need to download this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to download <coughs> both the certificate as well as the metadata. And I will be going to tell you how can we use both of them to register SAML using this certificate. So let me download this certificate. So that's a certificate. And also let me download metadata also. So metadata is in XML format. So let me show you. So as you can see, my metadata is in XML format and that's the security certificate. And if we open this certificate, let me open this certificate. This certificate contains the information about our identity provider. Same with SAML, here we have a certificate information. So this contains the complete details about our, info, uh, our uh, identity provider. So I got both of them. Now, uh, my next step is to uh, enable sign in, single sign on in service provider organizations. And here, my service provider organization is my Salesforce. So in your case, if you are using any other web portals or if you are using any other website, you need to configure single sign in in your service provider. Now, in my case, my service provider is Salesforce. So I'm going to configure SSO. Uh, so I just type here single sign on settings. So click on single sign on settings and in by default it is disabled. So I click on edit and I enable SAML. So now our system is ready to configure SAML and we have three options. Either we can configure a new setting. So when we click on new, we need to fill up all the information and load the certificate. We need to fill all the details. If you are not sure about any of the settings, and you are not sure about any of the settings, so you can use metadata file also. So I directly click on new from metadata file, choose a file, and I'll choose the metadata file. So that's my metadata file. So XML document is my metadata file. I select this metadata, click on open, and create. And when I click on create, you can see settings automatically registered it automatically creates a saml settings for me so it creates a saml settings for me so we have name api name uh, issuer it automatically took all issuers version identity id now we don't need to select this certificate because the certificate has already been added here and i just change the request signature method and uh, assertion description type is assertion not encrypted and i'm using assertion contains the user salesforce username and http post method i don't require this anymore right now so i just remove this we'll configure it later on and this also i configured as http post so i'll just figure this out and click on save so now our saml is configured so we have successfully configured our saml and if you look at this saml after the saml is configured successfully it generated couple of endpoints so these are my endpoints for this is for the organization i can use this to log in into my organization so i just copy this and let me test it uh, when i pass this url what it will be going to ask so see it is asking for login into that and uh, if i go for communities so that is the bisp sales community we are talking about bisp sales community 
so i select this bisp sales community login url and paste it here and so this is for login source as you can see this is my login interface for this bisp sales community now uh, we can customize this interface if it is required so we can go to administration and uh, login and registration we can configure we can change the look and feel so logo type is url this is an image so we can choose any other image here let's suppose i just wanted to login login on to i just want to provide a bisp trainings url uh, i think some issue with yeah bisp trainings url and i just wanted to upload this logo so save image as and i save this on my desktop and i'm going to use this file so i just upload a file from my desktop and i choose logo so it would be uploading so 100 kb maximum let's see what's the size if it is more than that so it's a 10 kb file so it can it should upload successfully and uh, let's have a look color is okay choose file logo.png and let me save it So uh, just in case uh, this logo is not changing, might be I need to require a proper, so it should be 250 pixels to 125 pixels. So I need to change the pixel, not an issue. Uh, background color type is image URL or we can change the color. So background color, I change color to this one and login button color, I change to green one and let me save it. and as you can see once i made the changes you can see the look and feel is changed so basically we can customize the look and feel from here so i just took some other different colors not looking so nice to me so i just took some different color and you can see the look and feel has been changed so like this we can customize the login screen for our community so let's get back to our sl <coughs> sso and this is the SSO we have configured. So we got this login URL. Now uh, we are going to define the service provider in our uh, identity provider authenticate. Means we, we need to use this credentials. So what I'm doing, I'm going to create a new connected app so that we would be able to log in using this control, using this button. So I click on create apps. And I'm going to create a new connected app. So I click on new. And I give name as Salesforce SSO app. Contact email. I just provide my mail ID. And uh, uh, in my previous videos, you might have gone through and you have, ch you have seen that whenever we integrating through REST or SOAP, REST API specifically, we use OATH. But this time, we are going to integrate, we are going to connect with SAML. So I click on Enable SAML. It is asking for identity ID. So I'll switch back to my SSO. And here I got identity ID. So I copy this identity ID and paste it here. And here it is looking for ACS URL. And what is ACS URL? Uh, this is the Assertion Consumer Service. And this SSL US, uh, ACS URL will be my uh, community login. So I just copy this community login and paste it here. So basically this connected app will help me to log in onto my app. And uh, username, that's fine. Uh, I'm not going to change any other settings. So leave the changes, leave the uh, leave remaining settings as it is. Save it. I click on manage and in manage we need to scroll down and look for profile so I am giving this I'm uh, I'm giving permissions to login 
to system administrator, uh, standard guest, and customers and customer community user to log in into this app. So I just click on save it. So I've done with all my changes, all my settings and all my changes. Now, if I just need to uh, test it, first of all, we need to copy this IDP initiate login URL. I copy this and we need to copy this IDP initiate login URL and add into SML settings. You remember, I have asked you that this this settings or this link we are going to configure later on. So I just uh, I just copy uh, this IDP initiate login URL and paste it here. Identity provider login URL. Save it. And this settings I have also set and uh, everything is perfectly fine now i'll just refresh my community and in my community i'll switch to administrator and in administrator click on login and registration and in login and registration you will find out a new uh, option is added that is bisp new domain dev ed so that is your connected app so i click on bisp new domain dev ed uh, you can see for Facebook, but this Facebook is a custom one. So this will be going to see in our later in our next video that how can we use our Facebook to log in into community as a SSO. So I just choose my option. I select this option, click on save. And now in order to test it, when I refresh my community login, you can see I'm getting a button called so either I can log in as a Salesforce user or I can use BISP new domain dev ed. So that's the uh, control. That's the connected app. And when I click on connected app, I click on this button and it will redirect me to log in into Salesforce. So basically now I can log in using my credentials. So this is how we are providing authentication to another Salesforce instance. So the same configuration we can do for our portals also. And when I click on login, it is asking for a verification code. So let me pass my verification code from uh, because I'm trying to log in into my Salesforce app. And I'll just pass it's 45571. So it's 45571. I click on verify button. And once the verification is done successfully, you can see we are successfully logged in into BISP sales community. So I have successfully logged in into my BISP sales community using SA uh, AML configuration or SSO sign on single sign on configuration. So that's the way how we can configure SSO. Uh, in our web uh, in our web portal or in our community same thing we can use for to configure on our web portals also i have configured this for my community we can do same thing for our web portals also so that's all in this tutorial if you have some queries you can post your comments in comment box thanks for watching have a nice day goodbye